I am the resurrection and I He who believes in me though he die yet shall he live and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help from you alone, O Lord, who by your sins are justly angered? Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, 
have mercy upon us. Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father of life that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, pray this day our brother Dalton Leroy. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gain of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call it was done before to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. sit for the eulogy which will be read by read by Terry Mack a tribute by the St. George Park Good afternoon family and friends thank you for joining us here to celebrate my dad's life Dalton Leroy Manning, born November 2nd, 1953, was the first of four children born to the late Gloria Paris, Nay Manning, and Darrell Paris. He's survived by his brother Richard and his sister Margot, or Anne, and predeceased by his sister Louise Paris. He received his early education at the St. George's Boys School and then moved on to the Combermere School. On finishing school, he worked for a bit at Barclays Bank on Roebuck Street before moving on to Esso Standard Oil and moved through the ranks with ExxonMobil and its subsidiaries for over 40 years. After the company was sold in Barbados, he spent a few years working with Sol Petroleum. My dad, the workmate and colleague. His colleagues over the years have generally echoed similar sentiments. He was a fearless, decisive, analytical, no-nonsense and hard-working man. One of his workmates, Ferdinand Walton, recalls that during the mid-80s, he was preparing for the annual financial forecast and was having difficulty balancing the rows and columns to the dollar. It was about 8 p.m. when my dad walked into his office and saw all the spreadsheets taped to the desk and all the machine tapes. And he said, you'll be here till morning trying to balance, just round off the numbers to the nearest thousand. Mr. Walton took my dad's advice and was finished within the next hour. In all of the notes I received from his colleagues, they all stated that though he was no nonsense as it related to work, they all still had personal relationships that lasted even into his retirement. This included him giving advice, sharing beverages, collecting children, and just having genuine friendships. And I take this opportunity on behalf of my family to thank all of my dad's work colleagues for their kind words and support during this time. My dad as a daddy. As a father, he was always there for us, and we could always count on him for support and advice. He was not perfect by any means, but he took his own approach to fatherhood. My brother Jeffrey shared with us recently that he had a job interview, 
and told my dad. And my dad sent him back a detailed email on how to prepare and conduct himself for that interview. For me, the first time I traveled, I had a lengthy layover in Miami. He told me, come and take a note. Just know that I boarded that plane with a sheet of legal size paper filled on both sides with instructions on what to do, where to go, complete with step-by-step -step directions that could rival anybody's GPS. He also had a softer side. My little sister remembers that he would lay next to her and take his nap or just stay next to her and talk to her. And during those times, he would even let her play with his nose. My daddy, as a friend, my dad was kind at heart, and one of the rules that guided his life was that everyone was to be treated with dignity and respect. During his life, my dad traveled all over the world, and not only made, but also maintained a number of friendships. And this is evidenced by the fact that all of you are here today. Many people traveled here to Barbados to attend his funeral, and many are watching online. My uncle Eustace, noted that he introduced my dad to his friend in Calgary named Kurt. After that introduction, Kurt came to Barbados for an extended stay. And my daddy not only visited Kurt, but as most of you who know him knew, he took him things from the ground, took him ground provisions, and also took him out to lunch. My dad also lived in Martinique for many years. And some of the friends that he made in Martinique are here today. And I beg all the pardon in the world. Je ne parle pas bien le français, mais merci d'être venu. My dad, the giver. Anyone who knows my dad knows that he was kind and he would give freely, whether it was advice, financial support, or his time. When we were making the funeral arrangements, I called my dad's friend Alan because I knew one of his sons was my dad's godson. Now, even he, he said to me that he didn't know which one because my, my dad gave to both of his sons in the same way, so he couldn't actually remember which child was my father's godchild. His hobbies and passions. Agriculture. My dad loved going to the ground, and he was very proud to have a card that was issued by the Ministry of Agriculture that identified him as a farmer. Traveling. My dad has traveled all over the world for both work and pleasure. He was always interested in seeing what the place was about. He went to museums, places of interest, and took tours. He was not afraid to rent a car and drive all over the place, no matter where he was or what side of the road they drove on in that place. He was also a contractor. He had, an, he had excellent project management skills and was able to juggle several things at once. He tried to pass on these skills to my brother and I for many summers, as we had to oversee a number of small projects at the house, like building the shed at the back in the backyard or when the house is to be repainted. Unfortunately, it may not have stuck with me, but we're hopeful that it is latent somewhere. The culinary arts. My daddy was not shy to let you know that he had over 40 years in the culinary arts. His specialties over the years were rice and peas, wine chicken, fried fish, baked pork, or his Arnold. And according to my auntie Anne, coconut bread. I've never had any of that though, so I don't know. One time he felt like eating fish cakes and he stopped somewhere and he bought some fish cakes. They were not to his liking and that's putting it politely. And you know that's not the way he said it. So he went home and decided that he was making fish cakes before and he could make batter again. So he got all his ingredients together, and he made these fish cakes that had the biggest chunks of fish in them that were just perfect. And if you know him well, you know that there was a lot of pepper in there to clear your sinuses. <laughs> Wednesday church. In his youth, he attended the St. George Parish Church here, where he was confirmed. And in his later years, he returned to the Wednesday morning services. According to him, Wednesdays was his day of worship. And once he was on the island, he attended church right here, and very few things could stop this. Whereas prior to this, he was only able to whistle one line of a particular hymn, sometimes Blessed Assurance, after he started coming to church, he added more songs to his repertoire, and he even started watching the Anglican service on TV on Sunday mornings. Relationships. 
My dad had a tough exterior. He was a tough man. But he was also very caring, and you could always depend on him. He took his friendships very seriously. If he considered you a friend, then he would go above and beyond to ensure that you were taken care of. And there are a couple of people that I need to say thanks to. Miss Angie, Angela Paler. We can't ever repay you for what you did for my dad. We can't repay you for what you did for my siblings and I when we were there a couple of weeks ago. And even before my dad was sick, you were taking care of him for many years. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of Jeffrey, Leslie, and I. I also say thanks to your relatives in Jacksonville who adopted us as family. Your mom, who made sure that we ate a solid meal every day and we never had to eat out. Tiffany and Zen and their family, who tried to always make sure that we were okay, and even in the midst of sadness, that we had a little bit of joy in our lives. Thanks to your sister, Joan, who did everything she could when my dad was sick. Every solution, she was on it. Even up to the last day where she was singing and having an impromptu church service with him. I want to say thanks to Aileen Bell. My mom, she's always been supportive and kind, and I thank her for the support she showed my dad when he was ill here in Barbados, when he wasn't feeling so well. I also thank her for the support that she's shown to me and my siblings. If I am not around, I don't have to worry because my sister will be okay, my brother will be okay, everything is gonna be okay. I wanna say thanks to Marilyn from Jackson. Thank you for your advice, your support, your chauffeur service, your cards, your hugs, your crabs, and so not the least, the world's best gumbo I've ever had. Thank you and thank you. Mr. Errol Reed, and just like that is how my dad would say his name, Mr. Errol Reed. When I don't know, I just pick up my phone and call Errol, whether my dad was here or not. When my dad was gone, if it went wrong, I could call Errol. Thank him for all the things he did for us while we were away and there was nobody here to look after stuff. Thank you for holding down the fort for us. I also wanna say thank you to all our family and friends that have traveled during this very expensive travel period. Your sacrifice has not gone unnoticed. And everyone else who's called, offered kind words, sent messages, we are forever grateful. I apologize to anybody who I haven't mentioned specifically or who I forgot to call or who I forgot to contact. While the love is always there in my heart, my memory has sometimes taken intermittent leave these days. Finally, one of my dad's favorite things to say when he wasn't feeling well was, the old gorilla is on the ropes, but he's not down. Unfortunately now, the old girl is down, but neither he nor his legacy will ever be forgotten.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Dalton Leroy, and we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit for the ministry of the word. of Ecclesiastes, use chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find, they not can find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. The hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Let's pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Kindly sit, please. Some words from the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, the 5th verse. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? The Gospel according to St. John sets out the final night of Jesus' life as he gathers around the table with his disciples in the 13th through to the 17th chapters. He has told them of his imminent departure, that tomorrow he'll be captured and he will be killed. And one can imagine the emotions that are stirring around that table. Everyone is tense. Jesus tries to comfort them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Just trust in God. Believe in God. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I come again, I'll come and take you to myself. And it sounds beautiful. But there's one voice in the room that wants a little more. It's the voice of Thomas. And Thomas is like that person in the class who 
the teacher is up there explaining and it looks like something simple and even though you may not get it you think I'll go home and read upon it I'll get it anyway but this person interrupts the teacher constantly and Thomas is the one who said we do not know where you're going how can we know the way you see Thomas has already worked out this sounds pretty as we sit around this table but I'm conscious of the world out there I'm conscious that the Jews out there are seeking to kill you you're going to be killed tomorrow what will become of us it sounds pretty tonight but how will be able to, we be able to navigate life here on and that is when Jesus offers him this word of comfort I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me what Jesus is here saying to Thomas is just just follow the example that I have given you and you will get to where I am going yes the world out there will be challenging but you will get there that is perhaps the same answer that the writer of Ecclesiastes sought when he wrote the passage we heard read not long ago he, he had looked at life around him and he recognized the world is not as black and white as we would like it to be everything we believe about life is not the way it really is yes there are some seasons there's a time to be born and there'll be a time to die but when that will come we do not know and that is why in verse 11 he says you know you have put a sense of past and future into our minds yet we will never understand the work of God from beginning to end because he has recognized that life is not as black and white as we would like it that there's a lot of gray matter out there and so just like Thomas just like Jesus's words to Thomas the writer of Ecclesiastes came towards the end of his book in chapter 12 and verse 1 and he encouraged the young people of his time remember your Creator in the days of your youth in other words trust in God you will not be able to understand everything that is happening in this world but trust that God has you in his care spend some time with him spend some time learning of him and this afternoon we have gathered here to give thanks to God for the life work and witness of our brother Dalton one whom you heard came up in this church in his early days and thanks be to God he was able to come back towards the end as his daughter Terry said he learned some more hymns besides blessed assurance but he was one who had an understanding of life in this world as you heard he was no nonsense in his operations he was very matter-of-fact and all those things but he too understood that there is more to this life than meets the eye he too understood like the writer of Ecclesiastes had said remember your creator acknowledge that there is someone who is ultimately in control of everything and that is what he was able to do in the latter years of his life I remember our last conversation in my office he came to see me the day before he left the island for his treatment and we had a long talk I was very hopeful that I'll see him again in my office I'll be very hopeful I was very hopeful that I'll see him again sitting in the fourth row in the back section there on the right hand side of the church as he sat every Wednesday but that was not to be but in our conversation he understood that he said to me I've seen a lot in my life I've done a lot of things in my life and if it is God's will that I do not make it through this I am satisfied those were his words he had an understanding of where he was he had an understanding of the vicissitudes of life in this world that we are not in control of everything but he placed his care in the hands of Almighty God and he trusted this God for whatever he was going through so much so that even in his illness he was able to help his son who had an interview and he still took the time out it was not about him because he recognized now his role in this world 
was just to spread as much happiness, as much joy, to offer as much comfort as he possibly could to the people around him. And ultimately, that is all that matters in this life. When Jesus outlined the basis upon which we'll be judged, it was the simple things of this life. Touching the lives of our fellow human beings. When one reads the final judgment in Matthew 25, one will say, but that's what it's all about. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was a stranger and you made me feel welcome. That's it. And we're told that many people ask, but Lord, when did we see you like this and did these things for you? And you'll say, as much as you did it to the least of one of these, you've done it to me. What that really says, my friends, is that the essence and the way that Jesus was pointing to Thomas is really bound up in how we treat each other. How we see the person next to us. Whether we care about what is happening in their lives or not. Whether we're willing to take some of the time that God has given us and use it to strengthen those around us, to build them up. That is what our brother Dalton sought to do. So much so that the father of the two sons could not tell which one was his godchild because he cared for both of them. All he saw were young people who needed a little guidance. Young people who needed someone to be there for them. And that is all that matters in this life. That is what Jesus meant when he told Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. And when Jesus says, I am in St. John's Gospel, it has special meaning. Because St. John's Gospel is not like the other three. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are referred to as synoptic gospels. That means they have similar stories. But John is different. John does not begin his gospel with Jesus being born in Bethlehem and wise men and the star and all those things and shepherds. How does John begin his gospel? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, and the Word was. And all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then what does verse 14 say? Just kidding, don't worry. <laughs> verse 14 says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So when Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. When he said to the disciples, I am the good shepherd, or I am the gate, or I am the true vine, or I am the true bread which came down from heaven, replace the I am with the word of God is. The word of God is the way, the truth, and the life. And all he was saying to Thomas, just follow what I have taught you. Follow the example that I have given you, and you will get to where I am going. And what was that example? It was an example where those who were on the fringes of the society those who were oppressed and downtrodden could feel that I can come to him. I can come to him and I believe he will help me. And that is all we are called to do and to be in this world. To be that person to whom people can come and experience the love of God, experience his compassion, experience his mercy, experience his care. We are here today because our brother Dalton was that for us. He was one in whose company we felt comfortable. Whether it was at work or whether it was having a beverage, one felt comfortable in his company. He made himself available to his fellow human beings. And perhaps in death, we can all learn something from him as we are called to traverse the quagmire of this uncertain world out there. The world to which Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? How are we going to make it through this? Perhaps our brother has given us an example of how we can navigate the quagmire of this world. And it's simply to live peaceably with our fellow human beings. 
and to acknowledge the presence of God in our lives. I did not know the stern Dalton. The Dalton I met at the door was the quiet, stately gentleman who would tell me, okay, Rev, I'm going to be out for a few weeks, so don't look for me, but once I'm back, I'll be back. And we would have our calm conversations and so on. And that is the person I will always remember and cherish. And I encourage us all. And as much as we have gathered here this afternoon, see this as our brother Dalton giving us another opportunity to reflect on the true meaning of our journey in this world. What is life really about? It is about reaching out to our fellow human beings, helping each other to navigate the uncertainty of life in this world, helping the other person to understand that every day will not be a sunny day. There'll be some rainy days in life. There's an old Arabic saying that all sunshine and no rain makes a desert. We learn to deal with the rain. We understand the seasonality of life as the writer of Ecclesiastes did, recognizing that we will never know everything about the God who created us and who sustains us. But in as much as we are able to trust in him, he will direct our paths in this world. That is how our brother Dalton lived his life. And perhaps in death, he is encouraging us to do the same with the time that God has given to us. To you, his family, close friends and work colleagues, we here at St. George extend our sincere condolences. I do so on behalf of Reverend Susan, who regrets that she could not be with us this evening, on behalf of Father Alan Jones, who is here with us, and Father Peter Boxel, who have taken the time out to come to share in this moment. When we encourage you to grieve, we encourage you to grieve because a beautiful soul has been taken away from us. But I also encourage you to reflect. Reflect on that last night of Jesus in the upper room and all the tensions there. And hear afresh Thomas's words, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And internalize the response of Jesus. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. And understand what that means that the word of God is the way, the truth, and the life. And just as our brother Dalton was able in his latter years to come back to Mass regularly and to sing God's praises and to internalize and strengthen his relationship with God, perhaps he is encouraging us to do the same as well, to build a strong relationship with God because we'll never be able to contend with the world on our own. And so I pray that when the pain of the present time subsides, you'll be able to reflect fondly upon our brother's time in this world and give thanks to Almighty God for granting you the opportunity to have encountered so beautiful a soul. And pray that Almighty God will receive him into his eternal care and that one day, through our Lord's promises, we will meet again in that place where death will be no more. Neither will there be pain or sorrow or crying anymore, for the former things would have become things of the past. May Almighty God grant unto our brother eternal rest and let light perpetual shine upon him. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And on that last day, rise to eternal glory. Amen. Let us now stand and reaffirm our faith in Almighty God as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God.
For our brother Dalton Leroy, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Your response after each petition is, hear us, Lord. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Dalton Leroy and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Raise our brother to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your sins. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life or hope. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Your sorrow and the pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and the maker of humankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and the pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, Let us commend our brother Dalton Leroy to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Dalton, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. Set him free from every bond, that he may rest with your saints in the eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, the Dalton. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem.
of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, you are the bitter pains of eternal death, you are the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. At our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Dalton Leroy, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed for the mercy of God rest in peace. And the Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him peace, now and forever.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. God be the glory, great things he has done.
when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. Hundred and three.
the hymn 414.
Remember, O Lord, this your servant, Dalton Leroy, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant unto him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this night. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Your 
key of the worshipers. Where's all of my praises? I want everybody around the world to put your hands together because all the praise belongs to God. Here we go. Take it up and praise. It's to our God.